PeteTools.com. G'day, 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 guys. Pity from Pete's Tools. How are you all going today? Bloody cold here today. She was minus 10 down south, so Peter's got to go and put his winter woolies on, I think. Anyway, what's the old get going on about today? Well, a lot of you guys are running the PT31 plasma torch like me, and this torch matches my personality because it's really cheap to run, and I'm a cheap ass chip sort of person. But you're having issues with the size of your consumables because there's three or four different sorts of consumables you can get for these. And I think some of you guys are just a little bit confused about if you can mix and match them or which one to use when you're cutting water or whatever. You know how it is. Anyway guys, that's what this video is about. PT31 torch consumables. Same as usual guys, you like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day in the comments below and we can have a bit of a yarn. And uh, let's get into it, eh? Hee-ha! Now if you've been watching any of my videos guys, you know I just love this torch because like I say, it's cheap like me. And who doesn't love cheap? I love cheap. Pete's cheap as chips. <laughs> anyway, there's basically two names for this torch. It's either a PT31, like it says on there, or it's an LG40. They seem to run under two different names. Just depends what sort of machine you got it running on. But an LG40 and a PT31 and a PT31A is basically the same torch, and they can use the same consumables. And these, I've done some research, guys. These consumables are the cheapest consumables on the market for what you get for your money, because they're really, really cheap to buy. Plus, they're double-ended. It doesn't matter what size you've got. They're double-ended like this. And what I mean by double-ended, guys, is this. We've got two ends on it, which is obvious. Double-ended, right? But once you use one end, you just turn it over in the torch and you can use the other end. You see, this is what I mean by double-ended, guys. You put it in there. You put your cutting nozzle on top of it like so. And then when you burn out this electrode, you just turn it around like so. That's half the reason why they're so cheap to run. Another reason is because they don't have threads and other bits and pieces to screw them on. Here, I'll show you the difference that I mean. So if you look at this torch here, guys, this is an SG51, which is also quite common on the cheap plasma cutters. But the consumables for this are a lot dearer than the consumables for the PT31 for this simple reason. If we have a look here, and we take the, the cap off like so, For a start, this is plastic with a copper insert, where the PT31 is just a little ceramic thing like so, so that's cheaper. Now we've got the cutting nozzle here on the SG51, which has got a thread in it, and it's actually like the manufacturing process is a lot more than being able to pump these things out like a million at a time, if you understand what I mean. And the swirl ring here is a lot bigger than the swirl ring here. And the electrode itself, like so, has also got another thread. It's a screw in one. And it's also a single use. You cannot turn it over once you burn it out because you've got a thread on one end and you've got your cutting tip on the other. But the torch body itself, if you look at the torch body of this and the torch body of that, looks almost identical. It's just the fittings that they put on top of it. And that's why the um, LG40 or PT31, this torch here, is the cheapest to run. This is just an example of another generic torch but there's heaps of other generic torches that are also more expensive to run than this one. Anyway, I'll show you the consumables on this so we don't bugger them up when we go to cut something. So this electrode here, guys, you see this one here, this is called an extended electrode. And then we have the equivalent here, which is called just a normal length electrode or a shorter electrode. When I buy them, I either state on my order, I want extended or I want the shorter. Now there's no real standard with what these come in either. Sometimes when you buy a machine, you'll get one with a shorter electrode, and then other times you buy a machine, you'll get one standard with a longer electrode. So they, they, you can mix and match them, that's what I'm saying, guys. So say for argument, guys, I want to set this up with a longer electrode. I just grab a longer electrode, I grab a torch body like so. Just a normal swirl ring like that. and an extended cutting tip. Now always remember guys, if you're using an extended electrode, you need an extended cutting tip, otherwise it won't work. Same ceramic on the top. Beautiful, no worries at all. Now I can do exactly the same thing with the same torch body, but I can make it shorter. If you have a look at this, take the longer one out, or take the, um, take the little ceramic off, and we'll grab a shorter one here and we'll set the torch up as a shorter one. So just put the shorter one in, 
exactly the same ceramic swirl ring. You need a shorter cutting tip. Remember, short for short, long for long. Same ceramic cut, like so. Now, did you notice the difference here, guys? How short that is compared to the other one? Actually, I'll grab another torch with the, with the long one in, and I'll show you comparison-wise. So here we have another torch, guys. It's just a little bit different colour, that's all. But exactly the same as you can see. See, PT31, PT31. But have a look here, guys. One's got the longer electrode in it, and one's got the shorter electrode. Can you see the difference? We'll hold them, we'll put them both down like that. Can you see the difference? In fact, I'll go this way. You might be able to see a bit better on the camera. Can you see the difference there, guys? That's what I mean. Shorter and longer electrodes. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, what the hell? What do you need two for? Well, I wanted that as well. But the nice short ones here, I reckon they cut a bit better, the shorter ones, for a start. Whether it's because they don't have to use so much material and they're not so miserable when they make the bloody things, I don't know. But I reckon these have got a little bit tougher lifespan than what the longer ones have. And the shorter ones are ideal, guys, just for cutting flat plate like this. But where I would go for the longer one, like this, is if you're trying to cut really into a really tight corner, and if you're in a tight corner, you can't get this to go right down to the bottom where you're cutting, so you need a longer cutting tip like this. So that's what I used them for anyway. So for cutting flat plate, like up to about six millimeters, I just use the shorter ones here. So guys, we'll just do a quick demo with a cut with this little short tip. So this is the shorter tip guys, so if I take that out, as you notice I've got a copper tip and I've got a copper electrode. But so what happens if I change it to a nickel plated short electrode like this? So we'll put the nickel plated short electrode in, put the swirl ring in, we'll put the copper plated short electrode on top. So therefore we've got a nickel plated electrode, we've got the swirl ring and we've got a copper plated cutting tip. Will that work? Yeah, it'll work exactly the same, guys. Because like I said to you before, just keep short with short, long with long. It doesn't matter if it's nickel-plated or copper-plated. As long as you keep short with short, it'll cut perfectly. Let's have a look. Yeah! So, right here, now we'll put some long ones in. So what have we learned so far? You can mix copper with nickel, as long as they're both the same length. So now let's have a go. An extendable copper one. Same swirl ring. An extendable copper cutting tip. Exactly the same ceramic again. Now you notice we're sticking a long way up. Give that a crack, Nigel. Beautiful. Right now, right, now we'll do exactly the same thing again. We've got a copper cutting tip here. Copper electrode. Take the swirl ring off it. The swirl ring's getting buggered, I think, guys. It's quite tight. Take the swirl ring off it. Now we'll change it to a nickel-plated electrode. Swirl ring. Copper-plated cutting tip. Same ceramic. So, so once again, we've mixed it up, guys. We've mixed up the copper and the uh, nickel-plated. Like I say, keep it all the same length, and you can't go wrong. Yeah. Now what we'll do guys, is we'll try a nickel plated cutting tip. So now we've got a nickel plated electrode, nickel plated cutting tip. I think personally, and it's only my opinion and I don't know shit about shit, you know me, that the nickel plated stuff, especially the shorter ones like this, are harder. And they're a little, they last a little bit longer, but that's just my opinion. Let's see if this works.
But what we can't do, guys, remember what I said, we cannot put a longer cutting electrode with a shorter tip. As you can see here, guys, we've got a big gap there, and it just won't bloody work. So we've got a gap here, whereas if we use the longer with the longer and the shorter with the shorter, you'll see we haven't got a gap. See that gap is filled right up now? And then the ceramic will fit on top of it like so. So guys, that's Pete's boring lecture for the day. Remember to use long with long, use short with short. You can't go wrong, cheap consumables, what more do you need? Yeah. And remember guys, you can always drop a comment in the comments below. We can have a bit of a yarn. Always remember, remember to subscribe to my channel. And uh, check below, YouTube's actually giving us a thank you button if you want to support this silly old get doing these videos. Anyway guys, enough bullshit from me. See you next time. Bye. Peachtools.com. Peachtools.com.